Self-improvement probably is something that people don't really push, but should. Um, the reason I say this is you can take your life anywhere if you want to. A lot of the stuff that holds people back is normally about themselves. I know myself, uh, when I left school, I started in electronics, and when I qualified, I could come out of my seat in guilds. It was just at the time IBM laid off about 100,000 people worldwide. Wages in um, electronics at the time wasn't very good anyway, and nobody wanted the school either, so I went into securing fire alarm systems. Now, over time, I worked my way up and now into consulting and doing things that I want to do. But that path is something I developed myself. When I did my carpentry and joining, for example, I put myself through college. Um, when I did my um, electronic 7261, I put myself through college. I worked uh, during the day, I went to night school, I also did the reverse when I was actually, when I was doing the seat and gills. Um, I went to college during the day and worked in the nights. The point being is, I had a goal. I wanted to get ahead in life. At that time, I could see the opportunities were more in construction, which is why I got into carpentry and joinery in the end. And then moved from carpentry and joinery into electrical systems. And then from electrical systems and carpentry and joinery, I did exhibitions and exhibitions into surveying. And then it just developed and developed. But you've got to understand, you've got to push yourself. I, as you develop, you will know you've got weaknesses. And this is like a bit like um, a problem that occurred last week where a agency called me related to a job I had already rejected because the salary was too low. Because um, they were saying that the... The company it turned around and said, just just find somebody with an engineering background that is computer literate and can do this, this. And that's not really possible. There isn't many people that have that crossover. And it's not because they can't do it, it's because they're not interested. Um, the reason being is, what I do with assets is quite a specialist thing. And I could see it when it first emerged that it was going to be a field that was going to be quite specialist because it's dull and boring. Now, the dull and boring bit doesn't bother me because I set myself on the goals. The goals are enjoy life, travel, experience the world, you know, do other things. And that's worked out pretty well for me. I've been, you know, even within the asset stuff, I got out to the Middle East, etc. I've been to different countries. And right now I'm sitting in Spain and I've got contracts coming in on a regular basis and I'm just waiting for another phone call and then hopefully I'll have another three month contract and that's me into next year. But the point being is that evolved through recognizing gaps in my own skills. It also recognized gaps in the industry. First thing is industry stopped investing in people a long time ago. The facilities management took over from engineering. Engineering used to invest in things like apprentices and etc. And then Carillion, for example, promotes the fact that it invests in people and yet it didn't he even have one apprentice within its um, engineering sector. Um, but the point being is, if they're not going to invest in it, doesn't mean you don't have to. When I did my locksmith course many years ago, I went to the company I was working for because at that time I was a carpenter and joiner and a, well, what they call a fabric engineer. Basically, I did pretty much anything on a building. And they turned around and said, we can't see a need for it. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be doing this all weekend because it was a weekend course because I'm getting time off. Um, it cost me over £700 to do the course. And they're like, no need for it. Monday morning, oh, we've got some locks that need opening and some bollards that need removing, blah, 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 because I can get access to specialist equipment that they can't get their hands on. You know, there's bollard removal tools, for example, um, where if you haven't got the tools, you've got to dig it out. You know, you've got to get a breaker and break the whole thing out. But the point being is, they thought, oh, you will do that on Monday, because now you've got that, we know you've got it, you can help us with it. And I just basically said no. Um, with it by Wednesday, 
they were telling me um, that the vehicle I was in, because um, I had a company vehicle, they said, well, maybe you're using that on the night for uh, doing your locksmithing and whatever. It's like, I will leave the vehicle here. At the end of the day, I don't need the vehicle. It's actually a pain to park on my driveway. But the thing is, I cover it with these call-outs. So at the end of the day, if it's here, it's going to add at least an hour to every single call. Because uh, I'll have to drive up from Worcester to Birmingham to pick up the van. Oh, we don't want that happening. And, it, and this is the sort of thing you get. But the point being is, I developed my skills into locksmithing. In the locksmithing, I realized the fact is, I'm on call-outs in the middle of the night anyway. Uh, because I used to look after uh, Sainsbury's, Matt Alam, and some other contracts, health and safety executive, for example. So if it rained, Sainsbury's always flooded. Uh, you get two robberies a week, so you're out there doing all them with the security of things. But if I'm up at 2 o'clock in the morning, it doesn't really matter that somebody's got home at 12 o'clock at night and can't get themselves into their house in Worcester. Um, and I could go out and make £120 for opening their front door. Does it, does it hurt? The answer is no. I was making an extra seven, eight hundred pounds a week. Um, goes up at that time anyway. So the point being is, I developed my own skills. The company didn't like the fact that I had these other skills and was had my own limited business outside of theirs. But as they stated themselves, when I offered them the opportunity to invest in it, um, they told me there was no need for it. So obviously there was no conflict of interest. And that's another thing about thinking smart though. It, by getting them to directly tell me that there is no need and they didn't need any locksmithing, etc., in their business, they'd actually confirmed that um, I could actually work as a locksmith outside of work because it wasn't a conflict of interest within the business. So, point being, this guy, I've gone off on a tangent here. Um, you need to develop your skills. In that case, I was increasing my income. That's why that focus was more about making more money at the time than anything else. Um, I had quite an expensive partner I was with at the time, so that was sort of like, I need to build my income up to keep us afloat. Um, and as times developed, I've moved into other things. I've got involved more in investments recently, because I'm starting to get to that point where I'm trying to withdraw from going to the nine to fives, do a bit more working from home, and also develop my investment strategies. This is something you need to look at yourself. Where do you want to be? Myself, I want to be off um, having to go back to the UK within the next eight years and being able to live off my investments and basically have property and everything paid for so I can simply just relax and enjoy life and do stuff I want to be doing rather than what I have to do. So you have to look at this because I know a lot of people don't even think about it. The average person that goes to a factory and watches the football on the weekend and they have their own little niche of things and they're not really wanting things to change. But if you're watching this video, you probably are looking at some change. You probably are thinking, well, I want to get the house paid off or I want to develop my career. I want to move forward. Um, you've got to do it yourself. You've got to look at where the skill gaps are. But also, if you're looking at it from a career angle, if you're applying for jobs and not getting them, or if you're finding that there's certain jobs you want, get yourself a LinkedIn and look what those guys have got that you haven't. Because you'll find they'll have certain skills you haven't yet. Um, you'll find they have certain training and certain qualifications you haven't got yet. Ultimately, you need to get, get, get those qualifications or get those um, skill sets to develop your own CV. Because once you've developed these sort of things and your own skills start to develop, your opportunities start to grow. I don't look for work. Generally, I find that agencies look for me because there's very few people that do this niche I'm in. And the reason I chose this niche is I could see that gap opening up because nobody's investing in the training. A lot of the software people are using is obsolete because it has, a lot of it was written in the 90s, etc. But also a lot of the um, software now doesn't actually work. Um, 
So there's a lot of opportunity even there to develop new software for solutions in these problems. And the fact that a lot of this stuff doesn't work actually increases my workload because I can do it manually. I can get Excel to do a lot of this stuff. But Excel training is something I continuously develop because Excel continuously develops. It evolves. If you go back to uh, Windows 95 or whatever and then look at today, look at the difference just in that piece of software what it can do and then you're looking at visual basic and you're looking at the macros and things like that there is always something you can take to the next level and the thing is the more you progress the more opportunities you have and that's why even if it's not work based it's knowledge based it's experience based it's doing something you like or creating the means to do something you like and that's why investing in yourself is so important Thanks for watching.